hello welcome back to my channel i am currently in wales i was about to say if you couldn't tell but i'm not quite sure that this background means anything to anyone so i am currently in wales with my parents my parents have gone on a walk i have chosen to not do that today i'm quite tired after the like four days of walks that we've already had but i thought i would just sit down chill out have a tea and film a video firstly i'm kind of bored i'm in the middle of wales i've also deleted my social media for the week so i'm like requiring something to do and someone to talk to so i thought we could just sit down and have a chat i'll do like a little q a i don't want to call it a q a because q a is a like lazy concept but i have a tea so grab a tea i've also got myself a mince pie i've had all six <laughs> i'm really happy about it you know this is gonna be gonna be this is gonna be gonna be a chilled video so i sort of set the scene of like beauty standards relationships friendships that kind of stuff that we'll just sit and have a chat about you know okay well i guess firstly i'll just say i've got, I've got a lot of questions about london so currently i'm obviously in wales as i just said i also appreciate this is not beauty standards friendships or relationships this is a minor update i've been officially moved into london since like the 27th of august or something but i was there for a week and then i came home to cats it and then i went up to see my dad and then i've come to wales so i haven't actually been in wales so i haven't yet settled in which is also why i've not given like a proper moving vlog well no I have, flat tour is what I mean to say, I haven't given a flat tour and I know it's going to be like a month like since I've actually moved in by the time one's out but it's just because I haven't been, been there and I haven't even sorted my room really. So how to cope when others are dieting when you're trying to love yourself and slash how to deal with your own body image when others are dieting around you. This is going to be the same as probably quite a lot of my answers to a lot of these questions and it's going to come down to the sort of individuality of existence. I guess it's a case of being rational with your own thoughts, acknowledging that yes they may be dieting, they may be trying to lose weight but that doesn't reflect on your own goals and your own being i have to do it now not necessarily with weight i see more with like sort of stages of life or like relationship status it's the same kind of thing where so for example how to deal with being single when everyone around you is in relationships or how to deal with being un unemployed when everyone around you has a job has a career all of these things you're bound to compare yourself because of what we're sort of told we're supposed to be doing at certain stages so for example we've come from a very like diet heavy society where we're constantly told we told it <laughs> told we need to be on a diet so when everyone else around you is on a diet regardless of whether or not you want to you feel like you should because of other people similarly we're told that we should be in a relationship we're told that we need to have another person there to feel not lonely but that's that's a whole other kettle of fish but when you're not and everyone around you is you feel like you need to you have to step out of the situation and rationalize with your own self and realize that you are all doing your own different things at different times like you don't need to compare yourself to other people that was such kind of an annoying answer right i know but i don't think there's any other way of like being able to actually explain that what is the most i like this question what is the most beautiful quality in a person being kind in my opinion you can have all this outer beauty but if you're not a kind person and i also think there's a difference between kind and nice i also think being nice is a beautiful thing but being kind is even more so you know doing things for other people putting other people first obviously you have to put your own you put yourself first as well like that is essential but thinking about others and all these things i just think when someone has a beautiful personality being kind being nice doing things that thing, my god my words doing things for other people that enhances any kind of exterior beauty that anyone could ever have so there's a lot of comments on my eyebrows here because well i've always had very thick eyebrows but i just plucked them to like near death i grew up i mean when like 2012 having really small eyebrows was like a really big thing in that era and so i plucked my eyebrows to near death they were they're not good now upon reflection obviously but at the time having eyebrows that i do now would i would never i actually found a note that i'd written to myself literally in 2018 so only two years ago so when i was 21 so i'm 23 now so when i was 21 i for some reason wrote this list and it was like the best qualities and my worst qualities don't know why the heck i did this but on this note i wrote my least favorite thing about me was my eyebrows and that to me shows so much about how much i have changed in the past few years and how much i really do not care about like societal standards that we have as much as i did even two years ago let alone 2012 when i had like zero eyebrows so anyway i've always had really big eyebrows and recently i've decided just to not pluck them anymore so they will continue to get bigger and you know what i may decide to pluck them one day so i may tomorrow be like oh, no sack this and i'll and i'll pluck them again but i don't think that 
really matters. So anyway, as soon as I started leaving them, I had quite a few comments being like, oh, Helena. So now a lot of people have messaged saying that they like my eyebrows and I appreciate that. At the same time, if I didn't like my eyebrows, I would change them. <laughs> When I was younger, I would never, ever, ever even think about stepping outside of like what people think we should do. And it's the same in terms of body hair in general. Eyebrows, are they body hair? I don't know, actually. I don't know. As I've said in the last video that I did like this, I stopped shaving my legs in like March-ish time, basically as soon as quarantine started. And I originally did it as like a bit of a challenge to myself to see actually sort of why I did shave my legs. I found that I, at the moment, enjoy not shaving my legs. I know a lot of people do enjoy shaving their legs because when you like get into a bed and it's all nice and smooth like that is a feeling like you would never know but i for the time being have decided not to shave my legs and i'm happy with that and whatever you guys want to do i hate when i say guys whatever you want to do that is completely up to you that perfectly brings me on to the sponsor of today's video which is estrid if you have followed me for a while you know that i've worked with estrid in the past they are a vegan razor subscription service so as i said i don't shave my legs if you don't want to shave your legs, also don't shave your legs. But I do shave my underarm still, and so these are the razors that I have been using to do so. They are so cute, firstly, but the quality is so good. And as I've said before, I would only ever promote brands that I really do 100% believe in. And I think what's really important about them, their morals and their ethics behind their brand are so in line with me, and they don't think that you should have to alter your body hair if you don't want to. Like, you don't have to shave your legs. You don't have to shave anything if you don't want to. But if you do, then using the best quality to do so is the best thing and that is what they are about and I love them if you would like to get them I will leave them in the description box below the link I will leave the link <laughs> that doesn't make any sense in the description box below and if you use code Helena at checkout then one pound of your order will go to the Fawcett Society which is a charity for women's right I would definitely recommend checking them out if you do wish to shave leading on from that I had a question about I had it a second ago and it was a good question okay how to go against social norms but remain confident want to but scared to so there is that initial feeling of not feeling confident and I felt it when I stopped shaving my legs especially when you're in a new situation so for example I didn't shave my legs and I didn't see anyone for like three months and I was like calm happy but then when I started seeing people in skirts and shorts and stuff I suddenly was like oh my god like you kind of feel like you need to tell people as well this is something else I've realized especially with my eyebrows as well I felt like I needed to tell people like oh by the way I'm growing out my eyebrows like I don't know why you feel like I feel like I need to explain my appearance to anyone when in reality it's my appearance and it doesn't matter but that's sort of the initial feeling you have when you go against social norms and I mean that's a problem in itself like that just kind of reflects the attitudes that we have as a society and that going against the grain you have to then explain yourself so there's always going to be that period of not feeling confident in it because it is a change it is going against social norms but as soon as you break down that you become more confident than you were before i saw a quote on tiktok i'm actually going to put the tiktok in and it was like oh my god i'm going to butcher it but it was like i've just realized that the way to become confident is to tell people that one thing that you would never want people to find out and realize that nothing bad would happen and then you would feel indestructible something along those lines for example my eyebrows as i said were a massive insecurity for a long time now that i've grown them out i'm like kind of fierce I feel more confident than I did before because I've sort of let people know that weakness but it's not weakness but you you know what I mean so it is a case of having to deal with that moment of not feeling confident or feeling like people are looking at you or blah blah but then you become more confident than you did before because you're challenging these thoughts it's not easy to do to challenge anything in society whether that's not shaving your legs or growing out your eyebrows or wearing a random outfit or doing anything that goes against what we're told to do it's ne never going to be easy but the only way to get through it is to just sit with those thoughts and then once you sort of sit with them and you realize that nothing bad is actually gonna happen you're gonna get more confident out of it in the end my tea is going cold and i haven't touched my mince pie so i put it down how have you become happy and content with yourself not being in a relationship so this is interesting this kind of comes back to what i was saying earlier about everyone else being in a relationship and if you're single you kind of feel like you have to be in a relationship <laughs> like i'm not gonna sit here and say i'm happy all the time being single like i'm not like constantly being like thank god i'm not in a relationship however i'm not pining over a relationship at the same time if that makes sense like i don't want a relationship but it doesn't mean that there aren't certain aspects of it that wouldn't be nice sometimes being happy in yourself not being in a relationship i 
I hate that I'm about to say this, but generally just comes from time of being by yourself. It's common for people to think that if you're in a relation, not in a relationship, you're lonely. And in reality, you can be lonely in a relationship just as much as you can be lonely not in a relationship. And I think there's so much pressure on if you're feeling lonely by yourself, then you need to find a relationship to not feel lonely. When in reality, I have felt equally as lonely, if not more so lonely being in relationships than I have been single. So I know that for me being lonely, having that relationship is not the be all and end all. Obviously there are some aspects of relationships that would inhibit your loneliness, but it's not like you 100% have to have a relationship to not feel lonely. Whereas I feel like we, as a society, it's made to feel like we do, but we don't. <laughs> there are some people that just naturally are relationship people and being in relationships is something that they enjoy doing more so than being single. And that's absolutely fine, just in the same way that being single is absolutely fine. Finding whatever makes you happy is the most important, but making sure that you're happy in yourself before you find happiness in other people is more important. God, there's been so many thoughts today. This is because I haven't been on social media for like four days, I'm like, so much brain. How not to be affected by Instagram beauty standards. Ah, uh, so do your best to curate your feed explore page to be an environment that is gonna be beneficial for your mental health. Obviously, as I've said, um, <laughs> have I said today that I've gone social media less for this past week? I'm gonna make a full video on this and like the impacts it is having on my mental health. But what was I about to say there? <laughs> when you are spending so much time on these social media sites, it is very easy to become so enveloped in these beauty standards and these unattainable images that you see of people. You're just seeing them as this one image and it's very hard to then, after looking at this image, rationalise with yourself that there is loads of other things going on with these people. It's not just like this one beautifully carved human. Curate your own feed, unfollow people that make you feel bad about yourself. If you see something in your explore, well, I would generally say avoid your explore page, particularly if you are someone that engages with a lot of this type of content. Like if you linger on like a post, if you linger there, it's gonna pop up in your explore page. If you linger on like a diet thing, it's gonna pop up in your explore page. So I would generally say avoid the explore page or focus more on other types of content. So for example, my explore page now is a lot of mental health things. It's a lot of graphics, it's a lot of Black Lives Matter things. It's a lot of LGBT things, like a lot of general information that I get from Instagram. And that's why I love it as a, as a source. And I think it's an amazing platform, but also there's a lot of issues that come from it. Obviously it's always gonna pop up, but I think we all have to take our own responsibility to make our space something that does make us feel better. Also don't go on it if you're feeling bad already. My dissertation at uni I did on fitspiration and the impact that it has on body image and eating disorders. <laughs> there was a significant trend showing that the exposure to fitspiration on Instagram, whether that be good or bad, be worse for people on their body image regardless of whether or not they went into it in a positive mindset however i did see that if you sort of went onto instagram with a negative mindset then you were likely to be more impacted by the standards that have been seen on fitness models so with that being said i wouldn't recommend going on social media when you are in a negative mindset already because it can further increase the negative mindset and then you're just gonna spiral sorry i've been talking for ages but i'm kind of having a good time so how has beauty standards changed from when you were young to what you see now? This is a great question and everything that I've said is sort of linked in, but it comes back to what I was saying about eyebrows. So that is just sort of one aspect of beauty standards to when I was young. So obviously I'm only 23, so this not, it's not going back a long time. When I was like 15, maybe younger to be honest, to some extent these these beauty standards are still around however when i was growing up it was there was no you know having a big bum that was not a good trait to have it was actually seen in quite a negative light when i was growing up and you can see that when you look at when you watch old programs similarly when i was growing up you everyone wanted like bigger boobs i mean it was probably as well because i was growing up and like when you're kind of going through puberty and like you haven't grown in that area yet you're like oh Oh my god this is stressful and it seems like such a negative thing when you uh, don't have big boobs when you're younger in particular but when I was growing up that was quite a what's the word socially desirable okay I've literally been talking for so long that my camera just shut out for like the third time what I was saying was that when I was growing up it was very like epi chic very 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 petite very thigh gap heavy very no eyebrows big boobs that was the beauty standards then whereas now it's more you have to have the big bum small waist and it's more about having the hourglass figure now whereas initially when i was growing up it was more just about being as small as possible the beauty standards then 
are still the same in some ways that is still seen as a higher beauty standard to be thin and white. These are two main things that have still contributed throughout this entire time. However, when I was growing up, it was very much more thigh gap, small, small eyebrows, whereas now it's like, we're kind of moving into a more of a generally more accepting era. However, we still have so long to go. We still have so many battles to win and I think beauty standards are always going to be a problem. I don't think, I don't, I struggle to believe a, that there's ever going to be a place where beauty standards are completely gone and we're accepting of everyone and doing their own thing. There's always going to be that level of standard that we hold people to. It's always going to be changing so that it's not achievable for other people. As one human being, you're never going to be able to mould to every single beauty standard that has ever come across because they're so contrasting in so many ways. So when we put people on a pedestal for hitting some at the time, in a few years, they may change again and it may be completely different. And these people that you've put on a pedestal, to be honest, most likely would be able to alter their bodies to fit them if they have enough money to do so. But for the most part, you can't fit all of the beauty standards. I also don't think it helps because we do put people on pedestals for being more attractive. Pretty privilege is such a big part of our existence and our society that you will see very, very attractive people and very beautiful people in terms of beauty standards that are pushed up. They are the ones that gain all the influence. They are the one that gain the status because of their appearance. And also that doesn't help because then all these people that you are seeing are all extremely attractive people. Because of their attractiveness, they're then given the bigger status. So we're kind of equating people's appearances to their status and ah oh, beauty standards in general is such a big topic i've been talking for so long so i'm gonna end the video now because i'm i'm gonna be here for hours otherwise as much as i would love to be here for hours I feel like i probably should stop talking at some point beauty standards is such a, a vast topic i mean i don't even know half as much as i i should on the topics so i do hope you have hello words i do hope you've enjoyed this video um or you know just got through it <laughs> Don't forget to use the link in the description if you want to get yourself an estrid razor. And I will see you in the next one. Oh, and follow me on Instagram. It's ironic because I just talked about how bad Instagram is, but fill your feed with nice people. Mm. <laughs>